Howdy there once again guys. I have found something pretty interesting today. Would you like to see an actual confirmed harmonic tremor? Well, you are about to see one and hear one. Please like, share, subscribe, and visit my website if you like my work. HTTPS colon slash slash monitor size dot weebly dot com. Today we are going to quickly talk about harmonic tremor that is currently taking place at Mount Veniaminoff in Alaska. Please let me know if I said that correctly. Pretty sure I said that right. <laughs> now the term harmonic tremor has been overused so much that it has basically been run into the ground. But what I'm about to show you is completely real and confirmed and should be used as a basis in harmonic tremor episodes that may occur in the future at volcanoes throughout the world, especially at the United States. So why don't we use this as a baseline of sorts? First, let's real quick understand this type of volcano. Scroll down real quick. Let me find the introduction. Here it is. From Millers and Others, 1998. Uh, Mount Veniaminoff is a broad central mountain, 35 kilometers wide at the base. It's pretty big, guys. It's pretty big. Truncated by a spectacular steep wall, steep walled, excuse me, summit caldera, 8 by 11 kilometers in diameter. The caldera is filled by an ice field that ranges in elevation from approximately 1750 to 2000 meters. Ice obscures the south rim of the caldera and covers 220 square kilometers of the south flank of the volcano. Alpine glaciers descend from the caldera through gaps on the west and north sides of the rim, and other alpine glaciers occupy valleys on the north, east, and west facing slopes of the mountain. In the western part of the caldera, an active intracaldera cone with a small summit crater has an elevation of about 2,156 meters, approximately 330 meters above the surrounding ice field. The rim of a larger but more subdued intracaldera cone protrudes just above the ice surface in the northern part of the caldera. Based on limited exposure and physiographic features, it may have a summit crater as much as 2.5 kilometers in diameter. Andesitic and dacitic ash flow tufts from the caldera forming eruption occur in many of the valleys on the north slope of the volcano and are found as far away as 50 kilometers from the caldera rim on both the Bering Sea and Pacific Ocean coasts. A northwest trending belt of post-caldera cinder and scoria cones, including the two intercaldera cones, extends from near the Bering Sea coast approximately 55 kilometers across the main volcanic edifice and the Aleutian Range Divide well down the Pacific Slope. So guys, this is a caldera. So it is possible, possible I'm saying, during a very large eruption, which possibly could be approaching, that ash could drift as far as the western coast of the United States. Though it would probably have to be another caldera forming eruption and erupt at full potential to do that though. Alright, here's the volcano in question on Google Earth, Mount Veniaminoff. You can clearly see the caldera imprint right here, and the main intracaldera cone is right about here. Let's zoom in just a little bit more, real quick, and just take a look at it. That is how it looks, guys. It's pretty much a caldera, but it has features of like a stratovolcano too. Yeah, it's pretty large, guys. It's quite a large volcano. Definitely larger than some of the other volcanoes I've seen in Alaska before. Now, I'm going to use the ruler right up here. Notice from north to south, from this edge right here to about the edge right about here. It's about four and a half miles. And from east to west is about five and a half miles or so. So, yeah, it is a pretty large volcano. Also, remember, this volcano contains a massive ice field. So, any major eruption would not only send ash a great distance away but would also melt all the ice and create absolutely massive lahar flows, which, thank God, would probably only, let me zoom out just a little bit, flow into the ocean right here. You can see probably past lava flows, actually, right here. So, I don't think there are any villages in this area at all. I don't think there's anybody that lives in this area. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks very barren, very barren. And it looks like old lava flows and a bunch of different features. The Aleutian Islands in Alaska are actually very volcanic. They're very cool, got a lot of different features. And we do have a second volcano right up here. It doesn't even have a name for it. How sad. This poor lonely guy doesn't even have a name. Now let me zoom out real quick. Remember, this is Veniaminoff right here. Right here. So keep your eye right here while I zoom out. Let me zoom out. Zoom out a little bit more. See, you can still see it. 
You can still see it right there. Yeah, it's huge, guys. It's a big volcano. Now look. There's that right there. Here's Washington. Let's see exactly how far away it is. There's Benyaminov. And there's Seattle. 1,600 miles. So, let's see how far Denver, Colorado is from Mount St. Helens, which is about right here. Denver, Colorado is what I'm going to say right about here. Because remember, in Denver, Colorado, they got ash from the Mount St. Helens eruption. And the Mount St. Helens eruption is probably much smaller than a possible caldera-forming eruption at Mount Vinyaminov. So it is possible. It's 781 miles, pretty much, from Mount St. Helens to uh, Denver, Colorado, give or take a few hundred miles. But the thing is, the thing I was just trying to prove right there is that this could possibly send some ash our way during its next very large major eruption. Now remember, Mount St. Helens erupted. It ejected 0.29 cubic miles of ash, but rained ash on places much farther than just eastern Washington. My dad even got ash on his car in 1980 in Denver, Colorado, and it drifted even farther than that. This volcano could possibly produce an even larger eruption, and if wind patterns are just right, and I have to say, if the wind patterns are going this way, the ash is going to go this way. But if the wind patterns are, are just right, and it's going from southern Alaska all the way down to Washington, which actually, I've seen the jet stream do that. It does do that sometimes. We could, very possibly, it's, it's obviously it's a rare chance. I mean, it would have to be literally a perfect storm for that to happen. But still, there's a chance. That would be kind of interesting. But with harmonic tremor occurring almost constantly over the past month, with no major eruptions, it is safe to say that something bigger could be approaching. However, exactly the size of the next coming eruption is not known. We can only watch and be wary. Here is Mount Vinyaminov, and here is the past seven days of reported seismicity for this area. Only two earthquakes. There's an earthquake on the edge of this volcano that we quickly looked at in Google Earth. Don't know the name of it. If anybody has a name of this volcano just northeast of Vinyaminov, then please let me know. It was only a 1.0 earthquake at 4.6 kilometers in depth. But just southeast of Vinyaminov, notice there was a large earthquake, actually. It was a magnitude 5.0 earthquake at 41.7 kilometers in depth. So it wasn't shallow. It was pretty, pretty deep at 627 UTC on October 10th, 2018. Besides that, no other earthquakes have been reported for this area for the past seven days of all magnitudes. And real quick, here is the seismogram of that large earthquake that occurred just southeast of Vinyaminov. And it was a magnitude 5.0 earthquake. And there it is. Let's go back to the spectrogram real quick. I'm just showing this to you guys just for your convenience. Again, this was a 5.0 earthquake at 41.7 kilometers in depth on October 10th, 2018. Now, this is what I want you to pay attention to. Here is the Alaska, Alaska, <laughs> excuse me, Alaska Volcano Observatory daily update with multiple volcanoes for Vinyaminov. Semis, oh God, Semisopuknoi. 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 Uh, yeah, okay. Cleveland and the Great Sitkin Volcano. These are all the updates for the elevated volcanoes in Alaska. Vinyaminov right now is the highest. It's a watch at aviation code orange, so they are expecting an eruption coming soon. Unrest continues at Vinyaminov Volcano. Seismicity is above background levels and is characterized by low-level continuous tremor. This is not written by me. This is written by USGS. Straight from them, guys on October 14, 2018. Elevated surface temperatures associated with the lava flow at the Intracaldera Cone were observed in a single cloudy satellite image over the past day. Webcam views of the volcano have been obscured by clouds. No significant ash emissions have been observed or reported. Vinyaminov volcano is monitored with a local real-time seismic network, which will typically allow AVO, Alaska Volcano Observatory, to detect changes in unrest that may lead to an explosive eruption. And just for your information, AVO, Alaska Volcano Observatory, is the observatory and the group of people in the institution that created this program, Swarm, that I use the most. Rapid detection of an ash-producing eruption will be accomplished using a combination of seismic, infrasound, lightning, and satellite data. So let's talk about this real quick. Characterized by low-level continuous tremor. Notice how it says continuous tremor. Well, that right there, they are talking about harmonic tremor. And it has been almost constant, literally almost constant 
since it started on September 4th, 2018. Also, guys, remember how I said how the Tremors started at about September 3rd to September 4th? Well, that it, uh, the Tremor that was going on, the Harmonic Tremor, was actually one of the reasons why they raised the, uh, the alert level from green normal to yellow advisory. But then the next day, and yes, the Tremor is part of the reason why they're raising the alert level, they raised it on September 4th, 2018 to orange watch. So the Harmonic Tremor does play a big part in them raising the alert level. How, however, I do believe some pressure is being relieved off the magma chamber since there was, and still could be, an active lava flow issuing from the main intracaldera cone. However, just because there is a lava flow doesn't mean, mean that it is relieving the pressure. Remember, magma chambers and reservoirs can be absolutely massive. In light of this, remember the recent Kilauea lava flows in the Lower East Rift Zone? Even though it was very extensive, it only released a small, small, minute percentage. Now, it is good that this volcano in Alaska, dare I say its confusing name again, <laughs> is not seeing large earthquake swarms. However, it is a very, very bad sign that harmonic tremor has been occurring at a virtually constant rate since it started on September 4, 2018, just over a month ago. This means a larger eruption could be approaching. Now, at the end of this video, I will show you two seismogram spectrogram plots in conjunction with seismic audio. So if you would like to hear the audio of Harmonic Tremor now, please go to the description box below where it says Parts and click the part that you wish to see. But first, let's analyze this continuous seismic tremor using the program Swarm. Here we have the helicorder open for seismic station VNSS EHZ in the AV network, which is located right here just at the edge of the caldera it seems, closest to the inside of the caldera itself. So here we are at the Vinyaminov volcano. Again, this is a short period vertical station. This is the day the harmonic tremor started. Let me just start with a few of them go forward a little bit. Notice that it started with what appears to be low frequency earthquakes in a drumbeat pattern. This signified the beginning of the harmonic tremor episode. Surprisingly, earthquake activity has been somewhat minimal since September 4th, which I find is very odd. It could be that earthquakes from past years have weakened the area above the magma chamber so much that it allowed a large flow of magma to breach the surface. However, it is currently unclear how much magma is being supplied. It does seem like a lot, however, since the harmonic tremor has been virtually constant for over a month and has reached amplitudes almost as strong as a 2.0 earthquake at times. That is some strong harmonic tremors, guys. So again, you can see multiple of these small events. They're not too big, but they were occurring in a sort of a drumbeat pattern. Blatant harmonic tremor. Notice all of these. All of these, guys. Look, notice no high-frequency events. Now, this is if you see this at any volcano in the United States and it shows on multiple neighboring seismographs, that is the time to really worry. That is very scary. I really hope I never, ever see this at any volcano in the United States. Notice how it's all, all of them are below 5 hertz. All of them. Look at this one. This one looks very similar to the magma resonance that we saw during the 2008-2009 earthquake swarm and magma injection sequence at Yellowstone Lake. Man, look at all these. These are pretty crazy. Yeah, and then you notice they turn into a drumbeat pattern down here. They're not too rhythmic. They didn't carry too much of a rhythm, but you could tell this is all harmonic tremor, guys. This is what harmonic tremor looks like. But here, it was not constant. Let me go forward just a little bit. Here's where it increased exponentially. Here's where it started to become almost constant. Look at these rhythmic waves, guys. Now, the reason why in uh, the first time they used the phrase harmonic tremor was, I believe, 1982 or 1985, correct me if I'm wrong, for the Nevado del Ruiz volcano. Now, the person who came up with the phrase harmonic tremor the reason why he named it Harmonic, the whole reason is because it looked like music and it contained very rhythmic oscillations. And you could tell these have very rhythmic oscillations. A harmonic tremor always occurs below 5 hertz. Always. So all the characteristics required to label something harmonic tremor is fulfilled all by these events at the Vinyaminov volcano over the past month. All of these, guys. All of these events. Not much wind going on, guys. Not much surface noise. These are all harmonic tremor. 
the low level continuous tremor. Let's go forward just a few days, a little bit. All right, here it increased once again, going up to 1,500 amplitude count, guys. That's very strong for harmonic tremor. Constant, constant, constant. Look at that. Look at that. Constant, guys. Constant, constant. Let me go back. Turn on the spectrogram just so you can see that. Constant, constant, constant. Man, it ain't ending at all. And by the way, that is an electronic thing. That is called a calibration wave. And let me go forward just a little bit. Let me try to find the end. There it is. Still continuous. Still happening. Holy crap, look at that. So pretty much constant, guys. Pretty much constant with a very low frequency around 2 hertz or so. Let's look at the spectral real quick. Turn off log power to make it look better. Between about 1 and 2 hertz. So about 1.5 hertz, which is around the exact frequency the harmonic tremor usually occurs. Now, there can be many different types of harmonic tremor, but this is considered the long period low frequency harmonic tremor. And it has been doing this for over a month with no breaks at all. No breaks, guys. It ain't taking a break. You know, us humans, we need breaks, but harmonic tremor does not need a break. Let's real quick look at some of the more recent ones. Here's from October 9th. Still continuous, still going up to about 1,000 amplitude count. You see in this? Let me zoom in a little bit. Notice the perfect oscillations. Do you see how it kind of looks like music? You notice that? That's why they call it harmonic tremor. But not just by the look. They call it harmonic tremor also because of the frequency range. Look at that. Now, at the, again, at the end of this video, you are going to hear a harmonic tremor. You're going to actually hear the seismic vibrations in your ears from magma flowing actively straight under that seismic station that recorded this. I mean, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy, guys. Look, all throughout the day, all throughout the day. Let's go back a few days. <clears throat> Let's go up here. Constant, constant, constant. It's never ending. It's never ending. I was pretty excited when I saw this, guys. I was pretty excited. I was like, wow, I actually have not gotten the chance to actually study a real confirmed harmonic tremor before. Because, of course, they are happening at volcanoes elsewhere in the world. But some of the volcanoes that are currently erupting in the world, I'm having trouble finding actual live seismic networks for. So I'm excited that I have a very good seismic network that is really good at recording these things so I can fully understand these harmonic tremor episodes so I know what to look for at future volcanoes. Now remember, this one is lasting a long time, but even if you saw this last for a day in conjunction with an earthquake swarm, that would be very worrying at a volcano. Let me go back just a few days real quick. I, I wish I could show you guys every single day's worth, but uh, there's so much data to go through, guys. I mean, it takes me like a whole minute to literally go through a minute of data, so it would take me a whole day to go through just one day's worth of data pretty much. But look at this. This is crazy. It's constant. I've never seen harmonic tremor this constant. And it waxes and it wanes and it goes back and forth. Sometimes it goes down a little bit. Sometimes it increases and gets very strong. Now, when we saw harmonic tremor at Kilauea during the Kilauea eruptions, at the summit, harmonic tremor built and built and built and built until there was an eruption and the harmonic tremor was gone. And then it slowly built and built and built and built. And then boom, there's an eruption and then it was gone. And it did that over and over and over and over until the eruptions finally subsided. But this, however, is still building. I don't know if it's currently increasing or decreasing, but it's still constant even to this day. And I'll show you just the most recent 24 hour data from this seismic station. It is still going on. So that means something bigger could be approaching from Mount Veniaminoff. Possibly a very large eruption, guys. So we will keep a very close eye on this. Here's the spectrogram. Let me zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to go line by line while I talk real quick. Now remember, harmonic tremor is a sustained seismic tremor with dominant frequencies usually below 5 hertz. Using the spectral analysis. Here, let me just grab the spectral analysis real quick. Again, log power. Boom. You could tell the dominant frequencies of the current Veniaminoff tremor are usually between about 1 hertz and about 2 hertz, going down to about 2.5 hertz, but never reaches past 5 hertz, ever. Notice that? This is characterized as a low frequency event. Whoa, whoops. There we go. This is characterized as a low frequency event. Now, since it is occurring at such a long rate, 
this can officially be categorized as a long period low frequency harmonic tremor, which have been seen at multiple volcanoes worldwide since it was first discovered. I am actually quite excited that I am able to analyze this event. It will give us a baseline to use in future volcanic unrest at volcanoes in the United States and of course elsewhere in the world. I am saving as much data as I can get my hands on in regards to this tremor. If you need any of the data or you want some images or just some seismic analysis images of these harmonic tremor episodes, please let me know. I could just make a few images for you if you want. Now at the time of me recording this, which is 12.20 p.m. Pacific Time, October 15th, 2018, Mount Vinyaminov is the only major alert that we have for all the volcanoes. We have four of them on watch, three of them here in the Lucian Islands, and one down here in Hawaii called Kilauea. And we already know that the Kilauea eruption could start up back up at any time. So really, that doesn't matter what the alert says. I'm really expecting the eruption to start back up again. So it does seem Vinia Minoff is the only major concern right now out of all the USGS volcanoes, at least in the mind of USGS. But I do agree with them on the fact that this low-level seismic tremor, also known as harmonic tremor, is a sign of something bigger to come. And the reason why they have this set like this is because there has been a little bit of lava flows, some steam going out, and harmonic tremor. So they do feel something much bigger is on its way, otherwise they would not have done this. Now real quick, let's check the past 24 hours of activity as of the time I'm recording this video. Now guys, why don't you come with me while I download the data? Right now it's 12.22 p.m. Pacific Time, so what is that? That is about, that is 19.22 p.m. Pacific, or er, uh, UTC I mean. So let's go over here, data select, I got VNSS. Let's do 15th from, let's just do 00, zero just to see the most recent activity. 00 to the 15th for 1922, which is right now as I am recording this. So this will be the most up-to-date data as of the time that I'm recording this. So let's download it from the data select. This is where I get all my data from, the URL builder data select version 1. And then I also get it from also the time series database. This is where I do my audio downloads for the seismic audio. And this is where I get most of my seismic data. And this is where I get my seismic data from California. So we just saved that. Now let's go back. Let's click out of this. I'm going to close all these files real quick. And then I am going, where to go? It's this one, I believe. Aha, here we go. All right, here is the most recent activity as of I am recording this. Wow, 3,000 amplitude count, guys. Wow, wow, that is very strong for a harmonic tremor. That's pretty damn strong. I bet if you were standing right at the edge of the caldera, you could feel the ground vibrating just a little bit. I bet you anything. It is still ongoing. Harmonic tremor continues and is not letting up. It's just constant. Look at that. Jeez, look at that. That is absolutely crazy. This is a great experience, guys. A great learning experience for us. Man, look at that right there, guys. Whoo. Man, if that ain't harmonic tremor, I don't know what is. So remember, if you ever see this at Yellowstone, run for the hills. But we, I personally believe we have never seen this at Yellowstone. We have seen quick, very quick magma resonance during the 2008-2009 Yellowstone Lake magma injection event. But we've never seen continued sustained harmonic tremor before at Yellowstone. At least so far from the data I've seen since the early 2000s to now. And here's a very strong one. Very strong. Look at this. Wow. Remember, perfect oscillation. Look at that. Let's real quick go to spectrogram real fast. Let's do a maximum frequency of 5 hertz since it does not go above 5. Look at that. Let's zoom out a little bit. Zoom in. The detail isn't that great because it's only 5 hertz. Look at that. Wow. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Let's do 10 hertz because it does look just a little weird. I think 10 hertz would be a little better. Let's do that. There we go. It's a little better. That is harmonic tremor. That is what you see during harmonic tremor episodes. The long period low frequency variety. Let's go back and set it to 18. There we go. So it seems harmonic tremor continues. And there seems to be no end in sight. Please use this as an example for analyzing future data that you believe contains harmonic tremor. If you would like a full data packet of the data I have retrieved so far for these events, 
please email me. But the files can only be read by Swarm or Waves, so please download and understand those programs first if you want, or again, I could just send you some analysis images. Now I'm about to show two different seismogram spectrogram plots with audio added. This is the seismic data that was translated into audio audible frequencies that humans can hear. Now this is the end of the video, so let me know what you think of this. I will be back soon and please visit my website, https colon slash slash monitorsize.weebly.com to learn how to download seismic data, analyze it, and much more. Thank you for watching and God bless. Now, what you are about to hear is completely real and is the seismic audio of a real confirmed harmonic charmer sequence. Using headphones would definitely be the best if you want to hear this, but keep your finger on the volume just in case it switches from the seismic audio to me talking. It could be quite the startle. <laughs> I will label the date within the seismogram plot first, and you can obviously see the time period at the bottom, in UTC of course. So please keep an eye out with me on this volcano. The first audio sample you will hear has been sped up just a little bit to make the data easier to hear, and the original time period for the entire audio sample was about 3 minutes and 10 seconds long. The sound is very bassy, so again, please use headphones if you can. It might be hard to hear the harmonic tremor if you do not use headphones. Frequencies above 5 Hz have been filtered out using a 5 Hz low pass filter, so you can hear the harmonic tremor only. Also remember these are only a small minuscule portion of all the harmonic tremor activity recently at Mount Benyaminov in Alaska. What you are about to hear again is completely real and has been happening virtually at a constant rate over the past month. Seriously, it literally has taken no breaks. It has waxed and waned but seems to be getting stronger just a little bit as of the past day. So check it out. Notice how it seems very similar to the harmonic magma resonance that we heard during the 2008-2009 Yellowstone Lake intrusion event. I will leave a link to that video below. It contains the audio of the harmonic magma resonance seen at Yellowstone a little over a decade ago. However, in that video, frequencies above 5 Hz were not cut, so it may sound just slightly different. The waveform frequency characteristics are identical to this event. However, thank God at Yellowstone, it was not at a constant rate like it is right now at Mount Vinyaminov. Now, this last audio sample that is just up ahead was originally about 4 minutes and 40 seconds long, but has been shortened to make the hearing, to make hearing the data easier. Again, frequencies above 5 Hz have been filtered out using a 5 Hz low pass filter, so it will be only the harmonic tremor you are hearing. So once again, check it out. This is the end of the whole video, by, by the way, after the following analysis is shown. Remember, all times are in UTC and data was retrieved from Iris and the Alaska Volcano Observatory. Let me know what you think, guys. God bless. And look at this. I'm pretty sure this is part of the harmonic tremor sequence. I don't think that is surface noise. Look at that. Wow. Very low frequency. So check out the last analysis I have for you.